This remote cattle station could be a kid's paradise. But for Emma and Chris Thedicke, getting pregnant hasn't been easy. It means everything to me. I just want to be mum. I just want to see you to be your father. The couple turned to IVF two years ago. They've spent more than $50,000, accessed their super and sold their home to fund treatment. And they're still waiting. Everyone would have heard stories of people that have basically invested the farm mm. into having kids. Um, you, could, you could nearly sell your place to say that's what you want to do. Um, so it's, again, it's not for the faint-hearted. The pair say the logistics of fertility treatment are ten times harder in the bush. You go and see a specialist or you make an appointment and they'll say, oh, well, you, you're way out in the bush, so we'll just do it by Skype or, or Teams Zoom. or Zoom or something. And you go, well, no, we don't have mobile service. Our internet is not quick enough to do video calls. This week, they're travelling 12 hours to Brisbane for their final treatment. Probably nearly make or break. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. If, if you don't get much success this time, then there isn't any other options. Outback couples are spending thousands on travel and accommodation to access IVF in the city. Longreach mother Rebecca Fleming went through two cycles of IVF in Rockhampton before welcoming her first child. You've got fuel, you've got accommodation because you can't just drive eight hours, see a doctor, drive eight hours home. You, you know, you need to spend the night at least. Um, so then it's time of work, uh, impacts everything. Nationwide, one in six couples will experience infertility. But for those in the bush, isolation can take a toll. The ones that may have dropped out are the ones who have had maybe an unsuccessful cycle and found that whole journey was really quite arduous for them. And doing another one is going to be really difficult. A cycle of hope and sadness for many. Victoria Pengilly, ABC News, Blackall.